Hey everybody, I'm Lonnie Richardson, the old watchman. Yesterday I spoke about the ancient paths. And today I'd like to discuss a particular ancient path in regards to the upcoming Passover. It's regarded and referred to as the four cups. And there are four cups of promises that God made just prior to Passover, found in Exodus 6, beginning in verse 2. And I'll be reading from the Tree of Life version, Messianic Bible. And it says, God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, as El Shaddai. Yet by my name, Adonai, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant to them. I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage where they journeyed. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of Benai Israel, among whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage. So I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, say to Benai Israel, I am Adonai, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. We'll repeat that. I am Adonai, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to myself as a people, and I will be your God. You will know that I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and give it to you as an inheritance. I am Adonai. So Moses spoke this way to Benai Israel, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and their cruel bondage. Now, whenever God speaks and God says, I will. That's a promise. And these are four cups of promises. God promised that he would, let's see, bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. He set them apart from the Egyptians. He sanctified them. I will deliver you from their bondage. That's a, blessing and a promise of judgment upon the Egyptians. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. He will set us, set them free and Egyptian, Egypt, Egypt, Egyptians, they'll pay for what they've done. I will take you to myself as a people and I will be your God. That's a cup of joy. So you have four cups, sanctification, judgment, redemption, and joy. And these are cups that my, I and my family will drink of this evening for an hour or so. That sun's going to set. And when that sun sets, it will be the 10th day of Nisan. Why is that important? Well... If you'll look a little further over into Exodus 12, beginning in the first verse, it says, Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month will mark the beginning of months for you, for it is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for the household. And it goes on to say in verse 5 that your lamb will be without blemish, a year old male. And you must watch over it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. They are to take the blood and put it at the two doorposts and on the crossbeam of the houses where they will eat it. 
And going on into verse 11, it says, You are to eat it this way, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. You are to eat in haste. It is Adonai's Passover. Now, Passover is also known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And it's celebrated as in remembrance of God releasing the Jews from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. But it's more than that. Why is the big deal about unleavened bread? Well, the rising factor, the yeast that caused the bread to rise, uh, to puff up, was indicative of man being puffed up within himself, that he was able to take care of himself, that he was able to fix things himself, that he was able to provide and nurture life in general for himself. That was a sin. But it was also noted that it was to be eaten in haste. Why? Because no one knew exactly when the Passover would arrive, when the firstborn of Egypt would die, when the angel of death would come forth and see the blood on the doorpost and the cross beam of, over the door and pass over that house. No one knew exactly when the order would come to leave the land of Egypt. But it's more than that. God did more than release the people from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. He did that. He brought them out from brought them out. All right. He sanctified them. He delivered them, which was a release from their judgment. He redeemed them with an outstretched arm. That's redemption. And he called them as people of his own that he would be their God. That's joy. Those are four cups. But it's more than that. I mean, he did more than release the people of Israel from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Just like Yeshua, or Jesus, did more than just die on the cross for our salvation. But what is the significance of the tenth day? It says... On the tenth day, you will select a lamb for his family, one lamb for the household, to be without blemish. And you're to keep it and watch over it until the fourteenth day. Question. Have you selected your lamb for Passover? My family and I have selected our lamb. He is Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Messiah. We've selected it. Are we? you going to watch over him? Are you going to draw close to that lamb and take care of it? Are you going to allow that lamb to take care of you? Now, in these days and times, the economic impact and this pandemic that's affecting all of us. It's Passover. The potential to see God's power manifested is mind-boggling. But if you'll remember when they took the four cups, when God presented the four cups of sanctification, judgment, redemption, and joy in chapter 6, it said that the people did not hear Moses when he told them about it because their spirit was crushed from their long suffering and slavery. You see, they had faith and they had belief issues and God brought them out of Egypt still. And because they continued having faith and belief issues, even though he did what he promised, they did laps around a mountain for 40 years. I'm tired of doing laps around the mountain. I've chosen my lamb. 
I'm drawing near to that lamb. I'm watching it. Are you? This is merely one of the ancient pasts. And people say, Lonnie, why are you so hog wild on a, a Jewish holiday? Well, it's not a Jewish holiday. It's one of God's it's one of God's appointed times. I'll talk about that a little later. But until then, come sunset, 10th day of Nisan, select the lamb. God is holy, you be holy. I'm the old watchman, and now you know.